Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, everybody on YouTube? This is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and I have a quick video. Yes, it'll be quick on the MFJ264 dry dummy load. Let me tell you why I have this. In the last couple videos, I was doing a couple power tests on like the TYT 10 watt handheld and the Bofeng 8 watt handhelds, and I had said in the videos, my dummy load was borrowed and never returned. So I didn't have a dummy load, and of course I was using my dual band vertical outside on the mast. Well, the vertical is not perfectly tuned, therefore I might have not been getting the most accurate reading. Now it was close, and I'll do some videos after this, but what I want to show you first is what this is. In case you're new to the hobby or you follow my videos and you're interested, why do you need a dummy load? What is a dummy load? Okay, so MFJ has many different dummy loads. Uh, I am an MFJ fan, and uh, this is the 264. This one's economical because it's small, it's lightweight, and looking at the front of it, 1.5 kilowatt, that's the legal limit, HF through UHF, 1 megahertz through 650 megahertz, okay? So it has the SO239, I think they do have an N model, an N connector model, but basically in a dummy load is a big resistor. If you see in there, there's a resistor, and what that is is a most almost perfectly tuned load that will handle from one end of the spectrum to the other so that when you're transmitting and making power tests or power readings, uh, you get a, a perfect tune because reflected power, as you know as, an, as a ham radio operator, SWR, VSWR, or reflected power is power coming back into the radio. That can cause some inaccurate results sometimes. Um, on the back here, the power capability chart shows you 1500 watts, if I transmit legal limit into this, I, it'll handle roughly 10 seconds before I should stop so maybe it doesn't overheat or damage. Uh, all the way down to 100 watts at 600 seconds, which is roughly 10 minutes. So if I transmit uh, 5 or 10 watts into this, I can probably guarantee I can do it all day long. It probably won't even be warm to the touch. But it absorbs the power so that you're not maliciously transmitting on HF, on a populated frequency to tune your transmitter to the proper frequency for maximum output. I really get bugged by that, and a lot of people do. You should never get on 20 meters in the middle of the band and transmit into your HF wire uh, and until you get it tuned, because it's gonna cause that CW tone or whatever you're transmitting into it, that's essentially interrupting or interfering with other stations that are receiving. So, you're transmitting into a dummy load, it's not going anywhere but maybe this vicinity on the desk, and it's safe for your transmitter so that you can properly get the, the finals or whatever if you have an old tube rig tuned up so that it's safe. You know that if you're transmitting into an antenna with an SWR of 7 to 1, you're gonna, if it's, it takes you a long time to, trans, to uh, tune that transmitter, it's going to damage your finals before you get that thing appropriately tuned. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to put this on the analyzer real quick. Let's see what it shows on the analyzer at different frequencies. I'll just go from one end to the other, basically. And then uh, I'll be using this again in the following two videos. Maybe I can do those tonight. Uh, and we'll see exactly what the power is, the power output. So this way we have the most accurate one, uh, accurate power output reading into the dummy load and uh, let's put it on the analyzer. Look at that, to make it authentic, authentic, uh, I'll use the MFJ 269C analyzer for this video and uh, if the light doesn't bother you there in the video. So I have it plugged in here and you know just to give you an example, 0.9 megahertz, 50 ohms. If I go through here, 160 meters, 50 ohms. All right, we'll go up here to 23 megahertz, 50 ohms, 28 megahertz, 49 ohms, 67 megahertz, 51 ohms, 113 megahertz, 49 ohms. All right, so right there, it's a uh, as close to perfect as you're going to get. 1.1 SWR, even if I go down here to uh, 28 megahertz, right at the uh, lower end of the 10 meter CW portion, uh, 1.0 to 1 SWR. So in my future videos, 
as I test, I'm basically using almost a per when I say almost is because if every single test was 50 ohms, I'm, I wonder if they can make a resistor that's that perfect. Maybe there are, but uh, to my satisfaction, that's a, a perfect load right there just about to transmit into to make accurate power tests and uh, radio adjustments. Uh, so there you have it, uh, proof on the analyzer. All right, so I told you that was uh, probably the quickest video I've ever done out of my 84 videos on my YouTube channel. But, you know, it's a good thing to know. It's a good thing to have. I hope you learned something from this video on why you need a dummy load. Looking at the quality control of the actual unit, it's it's there. All the, the uh, sides of the unit are all there. It's all straight. Um, you know, it looks good. And... This will save you a lot of uh, headache in the future when you're trying to make power adjustments or power readings because every service technician in the world that does anything with adjusting, repairing, or tuning radios or testing radios uses a dummy load. This is not someone who just might need one. I recommend everybody has one. And now for the next videos, like I said, the next video I'm going to put this on the dummy load and do another power test with a couple other ones and we'll see what happens and I'll compare the two maybe I'll take a clip out of the last video and then I'll do uh, the new video and we'll see what happens thanks for watching check out facebook.com slash ham radio concepts I need some likes there thumbs up here comment below and 73 from KJ4YZI